Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Call the meeting to order. Sure. Commissioner Thompson, you have the honors. Okay. Um, an invitation can mean like a prayer. And I take that real serious. And a lot of places that have meetings don't have a prayer. It's just just not heard of. And um, and I think that's the one thing that we need in this in this world is that relationship. So um but I don't want to say a prayer if we're not going to act like what the prayer is about. So um, I'm going to just say something really quick and just, um, and that'll be it. So I'm not a long-winded Baptist, I'll say that. <laughs> so let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this night and everybody in here. I appreciate their commitment and dedication to this county. I wish we had more of it because that's what we need is commitment and dedication. Be with us during this meeting and help us to always have discernment and to keep our eyes totally focused on you. And sometimes we have rights, but that doesn't mean they're right. So I always want us to keep the main thing, the main thing. In your name I pray, amen. If you can, stand on the say I have said blessing, let's say pledge. <laughs> Fred, will you lead at your veteran? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we thank you. At this point, we have a number of people here that spent many, many evenings and so forth in classes. They have, uh, we just had a, a talking session a few minutes ago, but we want to recognize and honor these folks. So as I call your name, <coughs> if you will come up, please. Victoria Bellamy. She's under the weather tonight, Mr. Chair. All right. <laughs> Jessica Moody. And just hold your certificate and line up, please. You, it's, you see, you don't get away that quickly. <laughs> uh, Scott Sterling. Rose Watlington. Susan Watson. David Woody, Anna Workman, and George Workman. If everyone will, of you guys and us guys, <laughs> will just stand. We probably need to move in a little closer, Pam and, and uh, Craig. See, Flash is all over. <laughs> Thank you, guys. May I shake your hand? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Enjoyed your story. Thank you, Sorry, my hands Thank you so cold. much. <laughs> Always a pleasure. You can't leave Thank yet. You very much. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Respect to Steve. Now, shake it. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for being part of this.
Oh, I'm sorry. This, that's because you were not here earlier. <laughs> he said they did a lot, but he didn't say what the lot was, did he? All right. This is the Alamance, this is the Alamance County Government Academy, the 2023 graduates. That's exactly who it is. <coughs> Alamance County Government Academy. Mary, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, we need to amend our agenda in two areas. Um, one is a closed session, and Mr. Stevens, do you want to address that? Sure, I'll be happy to. Um, I would ask that the board, pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A3, move into closed session to consult with an attorney employed or retained by the public body in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege between the attorney and the public body. The attorney will advise the board on ongoing legal matters, including the Quiet Albright EEOC claim. All I don't right. anticipate any action afterwards. And I'm asking that that be moved from... Uh, Normally you you were seven eight. Let's move you to seven ten. Uh, we're just shifting that around so that you guys won't have to all sit around during our closed session. You're certainly welcome to, but we'll uh, just adjust that. Uh, the second item, Mr. Carter, do you want to address that? If you don't, I will. We're asking that uh, items seven B and 7C be moved to our first December meeting. Uh, we received finally uh, some materials from the school board uh, Thursday at noon, and that was way too late. For our agenda had already been published, had already been sent out, all the materials had been sent out, and so we were not able to include those materials. And I personally feel that it's essential that you, Alamance County citizens, be able to see what the agenda consists of when it's published. And by moving this, those two items to the December meeting, you'll have a chance to see those materials that will be published so that you, the citizens of Alamance County, will be able to see those before we take action or don't take action, whatever happens, on those two items. So my motion is to move those to the first meeting in December. I second that. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Just a question. Um, I attended their work session, and was this published on their website? I don't have a clue. I don't attend their work session. So it was on, I know I, I don't either, but I did. And, but that was on, so it was published on your website? Everything I saw, I got a copy, all yes. that. Okay, so the, that public would have known. I'm just, I'm just asking. That's all. Okay, I just, I, I think it's important that the general public know what's being discussed and have the advantage of those materials before we take action on those requests. We have a motion second. Any further discussion? My, my comment is, Mr. Chairman, I, I mean, if, if folks don't want to take a vote tonight, the, then. I, I understand, but I think it's still at least good to hear the presentation. I agree. Folks are here to present what they've got. I think at least we could hear that, even if we're not prepared to vote on it. I don't have a problem hearing the presentation if we don't take a vote. Well, it's going to be a lengthy vote. presentation based upon what was sent out to us, um, and I think the presentation should be presented when we discuss the item and why disjoin their presentation and our taking action on it. General public is entitled to know what we're doing. And I think it needs to be timely. And I think discussing it uh, two weeks later is a massive disjustice to the voting public. Well, if it was on their website, it's on some of the general public, and as important as this is, maybe we need to discuss it twice. I, I, I just I think the school system's in, in, is in a situation 
I didn't know you were going to move this, and I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this. But um, I think the more the public can know about this with the discussion about tonight, certainly not a vote, the more prepared the public will be. Um, we've, we've got some real serious issues going on with our school system post-mold, and um, I just think the more informed Alamance County can know about this, the better. And like you said, Craig said, we wouldn't dare vote on this. That's a biggie. Um, but I think they have every right to present this to us just to inform the public and us even more so. That's, that's my opinion. Well, I'm in total agreement they are should, and we want to hear their presentation, but I don't want to disjoin the presentation. And I, I know that uh, Mr. Lashley and I have talked a lot about this item, or actually the multiple items, um, and uh, there are going to be some hard questions when this comes up, and it can be tonight, it can be later, but I think we're doing a real disservice to the citizens of Alamance County. And I respect that, but I think we're also doing a real disservice by deferring this meeting to a later date. That doesn't help anything. Like I said, just my opinion. Any further discussion? All right, we have a motion and a second to move this to our first meeting in December. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. 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 All right, it fails. So we're going to have it out tonight. Perfect. Uh, I apologize to the citizens of Alamance County for the lack of publication of the information. And I publicly apologize. To be clear, we had two changes to the agenda that were proposed, and we didn't vote on the change to add a closed session. Um, but we still want to consider that. Or do you want to let's, do that Let's vote on? on that separately. Board, do you agree? Mm -hmm. That's fine. All right. Vote on the closed session. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So we have the closed session. Thank you. Um, and we're going to have the school board thing. Okay. Um, Mr. Vines, you're first up. Oh. Yeah. No, I did not. <laughs> yeah, we, he's right. We need to approve our agenda motion to uh, approve. as amended. As amended. <coughs> did you make a motion, Steve? He did. I'll second. All, right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. All right. Mr. Vines. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Henry Vines and down in Snow Camp. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to wish each and every one of y'all a happy Thanksgiving and the staff. Uh, we've worked with them and these are good folks. Uh, I just have a couple of things I was going to mention tonight. Um, and I see it's not on the agenda. And uh, that's about the planning board and the number of people that was proposed uh, last week. Uh, reducing the number of people on the planning board um, commissioners I I feel like that the 13 is adequate this has been the number that's been there for as long as I can remember and it represents all the way across the county 13 communities should be represented and the fact that we get people that will not attend should not be a driving force uh, to cut it down to a small number so that we could get a quorum. I think we need to do a better job in recruiting people to come and serve the county on the planning board. Uh, when you have issues that come up in, for the county, how can you have a fair discussion if you don't have fair representation across the county with folks in here? And secondly, the thing that um, y'all discussed about having a a board of review. If you board of review for the for the um, appeals for yeah. for the appeals, yeah, and uh, that's typically you know that's that falls back on you commissioners, and that's when the the planning board 
gives a thumbs down to something that a citizen wants to do. And they really want to come and talk to you and, you know, get you to make a decision because we elected you. Now, I can understand if you wanted to appoint someone similar to the thing like you do on the Board of Equalization that represented you, each individual on that board, and that's your person that's representing you. And I thought I had the thought that if you wanted to have an alternate, that it should be you as a commissioner. If if one of your appointees can't be there, then they need to call you and say, Mr. Turner, I can't be there. Can you come? I, or for whatever reason, I need you to come in and fill in my place instead of pointing outside people to be alternates. And I would just hope that y'all would consider that before you start reducing this down. Secondly, I was just going to say a little bit about the school board thing. Um, the one thing that really disturbed me is in this request for this $9 million is that no extension of maintenance and a maintenance program was mentioned in any of this. Thank you. It's all right. Thank you. Out of time. Thank you. Okay. Marina, is it Marina? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Oh, Marina Garcia. Thank you. And would you give us your name and where you live? Yes, absolutely. Um, good evening, um, County Commissioners. My name is Mary Elena Moreno Garcia, um, and I serve as the nurse um, for the Alamance County Board of Health. Um, and I'm before you this evening on behalf of the Board of Health um, to let you know that the Board of Health unanimously supports the Health Department submission of the grant application for the RFA. A409, which is the Partnership for Overdose Prevention and Harm Reduction, which is before you tonight on your consent agenda. Um, and, and just to provide you a little bit more information about it, um, according to the North Carolina Centers for Health Statistics, Alamos County had a 48 um, overdose deaths in uh, 2020, 67 deaths in 2021, and um, the 2022 data it will soon be released and is expected to have similar outlook. Um, the Alamance County overdose death rate is 28.3 per 100,000, which is slightly higher than the state um, average, which is 27.6 per 100,000. The health department's grant application, if awarded, um, will expand their current efforts to help those that um, struggle with drug abuse within our communities. Um, the health department has used their um, staff, some of their staff member, to um, start with paving the way um, in the last two years, and they have directly worked with individuals uh, who struggle with substance use disorder community groups, um, they have participated in community events and deliver messaging at um, education events. At community events, staff educated about drug use and also hand out Narcan um, and other supplies. Um, staff, particularly Ashley uh, Barber, who is the coordinator for health services, um, goes out to hotels and other areas using the hotspot um, data from the local law enforcement um, one to two days per week. And um, she works directly with people who, again, struggle with substance use disorder. Uh, she conducts education for um, about one pill can um, kill uh, potency, mixed drugs use, um, <coughs> provides harm reduction assistance, and also educates users on testing their drugs. Um, she also provides users um, treatment resources um, availability and navigation into treatment facilities. Um, I mention all of this because the grant will help with expanding um, the health department's current effort and increase the department's grassroots approach um, to prevent and to mitigate Elements County um, police substance use crisis. Thank you. And we thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Does vaping come under that by any chance? Tony? Okay. It's all tied in, right? All They're all sisters. Yeah, thank you. Okay, next is our consent agenda. Motion to approve. I'll second. Any further discussion? 
All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Okay, next is the um, item 7A. That's the Burlington LMS Airport Authority appointments. You have three applications. There are only two vacancies. And two recommendations. And there are two recommendations from the Airport Authority. I'll make a motion to accept the two recommendations by the Airport Authority, Joe Murray and Randolph Carey, Jr. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, Randolph Carey, Jr. and um, Joe, Murray. Joe Murray are the two appointees. Uh, I also acknowledge that um, Robert Call, his application is extremely impressive. It is. And I would encourage him to continue on uh, either applying or being involved with county government. Thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Hook. This is item 7B, LMS Burlington School System Capital Projects Funding Request. Chairman, Mr. Paisley, Board of Commissioners, uh, I'm here today to uh, ask you uh, for an increase in uh, funding for two projects. Uh, first uh, is the Graham Middle School roofing project. Uh, this was on the uh, what was called the top 10 list prior to, to me taking this position. It uh, has come out of design and gone into bidding, uh, and the, uh, the bids all came in uh, well above the available funds. Uh, so I'm asking for an additional uh, $124,881,000 of capital reserves be directed to the Graham Middle School roofing project. This is a partial roofing project, what I'd call phase two. Uh, phase one of this project uh, began in 2019 where they roofed another section of this building. The second part of this request, uh, I'm asking for... Uh, $177,000 uh, and 800, uh, $177,880 uh, to put the Eastern High School roof into design. Uh, this was not on any top 10 or next 10 list. Um, however, I feel it should, uh, should be. We've had 42 uh, uh, roof leak work orders there in the past two years. I uh, just received bills this month for near about $3,000 in roof leak repairs at Eastern High School. So the $177,000 would allow us to put it into design. And I'm asking for available capital reserve funds uh, for, for these two projects in the amount of $302,761. Was it Eastern that was kind of new and they're having some problems with it? No, Eastern, it Eastern is, is, is okay. very, very old. Yeah. <coughs> Can I help provide some clarification on the source of the funding? Um, some of it would be school capital reserve funds, and some of it would be interest earnings on the bond proceeds. So neither piece of this is asking for new funding to be appropriated. And one of these was not on the top ten list. That's correct, Eastern High, I think. All right. And additionally, we have now hired our own engineers to look at these roofs and requests, and that's in progress and we do not have that report back at this time. That is correct. We do have a, a, some reason to believe that these projects will be on the, the first priority of projects that you'll receive by the end of January. So what's it look like in the building? Is it bucket material where it's coming out of the roof? Uh, or what? At, at Eastern High School, particularly, yeah. particularly the gym uh, building that uh, houses the band and course uh, programs, water comes in there uh, every every time it rains. Um, and then on the other buildings, the roofs are between 28 and 30 years old, the best we can tell. We don't have uh, the accurate records on all those. There's roof sections there. Um, but water comes in various places uh, when it rains, and we have a, a roofing company come out. We don't do the roofing ourselves mm -hmm. and, and put patches on. But if you look at the, look at the roofs, you can tell they're they're very old. 
And just to tag to that, if I can, Cummins had issues with their auditorium and their music room <clears throat> and everything like that. And I got pictures, the floor buckled up. The more that happens, the worse that gets. And there's valuable instruments in there. There were valuable band uniforms in there. There was a grand piano in there. There was all kind of stuff in there that really got damaged by the continuous leaking and plus the auditorium yeah. with the wiring, everything. Leaks destroy everything. That's what I'm trying to say. So, so th these two were, um, uh, the, the Graham Middle School was on the top 10, yeah. um, but the Eastern High was, was not. Uh, but when we did all the mold uh, mold repair, we had to re replace a lot of a lot of ceiling tiles in Eastern, and Eastern is one of the campuses where we had the uh, the toxigenic mold in one of the, one of the buildings due to water intrusion. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Thompson, is, do you have other questions? No, for I'm Mr. sorry. If, look, I'm 64, and going through a little thing right now. I and just if I remember it, John. If I don't say it, it's gone. No. So I appreciate your patience. Mr. Turner. Couple, couple questions, Mr. Hook. Um, Grand Middle, you, you said that was on the top 10. Do you mean, I mean, is it currently on the yes, top 10? Okay. Yes, it never, it never left that group. We've been awaiting the, the pro, it to come out of design before we could bid it out. So it was uh, sent to design just before I came, which is just over eight months ago. Okay, and so the 124 is the overage from what was originally budgeted 18 months ago or so? Um, well, uh, we originally had uh, there's a there's a story to this project uh, but um, it looks like in 2019 you all can uh, set aside six hundred eighty two thousand six hundred and twenty five dollars uh, for the roof project which would have been phase one uh, and the school system paid the design fees out of that but then when they did the roof with uh, triangle roofing they actually paid for that out of pago funds so that left $633,000 back in 2020. Uh, this board approved $623,515 in additional funds in 2023, which gave us um, $1.257 million then. We have paid for the design now for phase two, and we have $1.168 million left now, and we're $124,000 short. Okay. Okay. So this would this would fund the completion of the Graham Middle School roof project. Yes, with the exception of the library building, which is a shingled roof that's not part of. It was this. never it was never part of the design. No, and it's it's about thirty years old. It would need to be done sometime soon, but it's not part of this. Well, that'll be looked at when we get our roof inspection, right? Yes. What is the timeline? Once it's fully funded, what's the timeline to complete that roof project? Um, uh, if we're able to take this bid and get a contract to our board, uh, the first week of December, uh, they'd start bringing materials on site as soon as they could. So I would expect them to start January. But what's the time to complete? Uh, um, I mean, from whenever it starts to whenever it finishes, what's that time? I'd say two to three months. And then following that, you'd have your uh, your punch list that would carry on. To how long, how good is down. the contract pricing good for how long is that? Uh, they're, they're holding that for us now because uh, they, they knew that we were going to be coming to ask for funds. But this was the low bid on the project. Okay. Um, and then the, <coughs> the design for Eastern High School Roof, that's just the design? That's just the, the design. And uh, uh, Chairman, Mr. Paisley had mentioned you had the roofing study um, approved now. At the time that I took this to our board, the roofing study was not approved. I certainly understand that, that perspective on that, that request. And to, to that and Mr. Baker, what's the company that we've got to do the roofing analysis? So, Roofing Engineers, REI, um, and the principal there is Ron McCaskill. Uh, I did have a chance to speak with them about these requests just to verify whether these were going to be top priorities for us. So he hasn't obviously had a chance to evaluate all the roofs. He is familiar with these and has looked at several of the school system roofs, and he was comfortable telling me that this roof is going to be in the top five, top ten, at any point when he's done with all of them. This is a priority for us, so it's going to be on the top shelf whenever that assessment is complete. When you say this roof, do you mean Eastern or Graham? Both, both? actually. Both, both roofs are going to be top. Um, Graham, he's already done with the design. I'm not sure he can design. The design is already done. They're, they're ready to go. But um, particularly Eastern, 
they they're in need of design services pretty quickly. These are actively le leaking roofs, and he said those were going to be first priorities um, in his assessment. How long does the design take? It's, it's taken six to eight months now. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Carr. Who, now who's doing the repairs for these roofs? Uh, well, we split our um, our roof repairs between Triangle Roofing and Mitchell Roofing. We have so many. Uh, so uh, at this uh, this school, uh, Eastern Mitchell Roofing does the repairs there. And who did the last work on it? At Eastern Eastern, Eastern High School, Mitch, Mitchell Roofing has done the re repairs Mitchell there. Done it all. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I brought five uh, invoices we have from Mitchell, if y'all would like to see what, what they look like. That would be helpful. These are five different invoices. Oh, it's five different ones. Okay. Yes, sir. When did Eastern and Mitchell last do work on that room? Well, the, I have five invoices there that we have paid just this month for Mitchell. Uh, we've had 42 work orders in the past two years for roof leaks at Eastern High School. Uh, the way I like to look at it, uh, the, if the principal sees wet ceiling tiles after a rain, they would put in a work order for a roof leak. Uh, and then our maintenance department will call out uh, one of the two roofing companies that we use to, to do patching. So uh, what, what I, I really think happens, and just listening to how we've had discussions in uh, in uh, this room before um, regarding wet ceiling tiles. If it rains today and the principal puts in a work order uh, and then our maintenance department will come and change the tiles at some point, then they look dry, but if the roof's not repaired, then it rains again, they'll put in a work order for the, for the same thing. Sometimes if the tiles are not changed and they remain wet and it rains again, they won't put a work order in. So 42, you know, could, it really could be uh, 84 if, if enough time to lapse between, between rains. But when it rains and you don't get them changed, the principal wouldn't be likely to put in another work order. Well, we passed our annual budget on June the 19th of this year. That's not many months ago. Yes. Why was this project not on that budget? Well, when I came, I was just passing uh, the uh, top 10 and the next 10 lists back uh, to, to the budgeting process. I wasn't aware that this roof was as bad as it is uh, until I'd been here for a while. But so, you had a predecessor. Eastern, yes, sir. And Dr. Thorpe was your predecessor. He didn't look at the roofs. I, I can't say. Uh, I can just say I have 42 work orders in the past two years for Eastern. We, the Alabama County taxpayers and citizens cannot every month give you millions of dollars more beyond your budget. That cannot continue. And you co keep coming back. And by you, I'm pointing at you, but it's the entire school board. It's the entire uh, the superintendent. It's not just you. I'm not pointing to you. I only. understand. But June the 19th, we gave you, I've gotten 700000 more than you than Dr. Butler said would cover our expenses. We gave you more on that occasion than you had even asked for. And these two projects were not even on that budget. Uh, we cannot continue month after month after month. Can we, the tax, we've already set our agenda. We set the tax rate, even with the revaluation. We can't continue to come up with millions of dollars more every month for the school system. I don't understand why you guys can't get your stuff together at our annual budget and why you come back every month asking for, and I'm saying we, all of us are heavily involved in education. Both of our wives taught for years in this school system, but I do not understand why you guys can't get your stuff together and ask and present us a budget that we can live with. 
we can't go back and hit the taxpayers again. The law does not allow us to do that. I've gone back through, and with my wife's help particularly, and roofs are on your request list time and time and time. Now, this, the building may change, and roof design may or may not change, but it's a continuous asking, begging, whatever you're doing without being prepared and asking us when we set our annual budget. We can't go back and tell the taxpayers which we made a mistake. You guys made the mistake. And I also want to know on these roofs and so forth, what were your maintenance people doing and I'm going to ask you this on uh, 7C as well, when you're asking for millions more, what were your maintenance people doing all summer and three weeks before school was to open, mysteriously we now find the mold and mildew? I cannot understand that. Do you have any answers? Um, well, for the Eastern, uh, Eastern uh, project... Uh, now, I'm talking the about the overall issue. Why was this not presented to us well I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's foreseeable uh, when we're using budget numbers from the past uh, to predict what the bids will come in for example on the Grand Middle School roof um, I don't know how to request um, some funding for both but where we're over budget on bidding and I think that may be a place that we need we need to go because we're going to continue to have this problem it's happened with every everything that's gone out to bid since I've been here so I think that's a place we we could collaborate to come come up with something better. We county commissioners cannot function on a gee golly we forgot about it or we didn't look or we did whatever. We've got to have the information to be able to attack, protect the students, the teachers, and the taxpayers. We have a we don't have a sole obligation to solely teachers and students. We do to everybody, including the taxpayers. That cannot continue. Mr. Lashley. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I uh, appreciate the time. And uh, thank you, Mr. Hook, for coming tonight. Really do appreciate you being here. Um, I just have one question. I think it was said earlier, I don't know if it was Ms. Evans or Heidi, um, the funding source for this. You, you mentioned yes. uh, Capital Reserve. The school capital reserve fund, we would transfer uh, 85703 um, from existing school capital reserve funds, and then 216977 would be interest earned on the 21 bond proceeds. Okay. Does that wipe that out? It, that would leave a capital reserve balance of $34,389.32. Thank you. I guess I, I understand that uh, what, what you're asking for is just the <clears throat> design process. I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask this question again because I've been asking to anybody who has a law degree. I know you don't have a law degree, but I'm, um, I'm just curious. Is this design process that we find ourselves in, is it statutorily required? Um, well, I'd say yes and no. So um, what I found, you asked me this question a couple months ago, the same mm -hmm. question, mm -hmm. uh, and I said I can't say. So today it's yes and no. Um, if we use state money um, or uh, state grant money, then the answer is yes. If you don't and you use purely uh, county funds, then the answer is no. The problem you would come across if you didn't go through the design process and then if you at some point were to redirect funds like pull in a million dollars of lottery funds to the project or R and R funds, then you'd be breaking statute because you didn't go through design. So I think last time I told you I thought I felt like it was best practice and I would still say that. Uh, for example, if we were to apply for the uh, needs based grant for any of these roofing projects that are ongoing and we were to get it and it hadn't gone through design then we wouldn't we wouldn't get it so um, it they are they do tell you they're backed up uh, uh, six to eight weeks just in the the uh, review process for the certificate of review and how that plays out the designer like REI that uh, Mr. Baker has mentioned 
will send their uh, design plans to DPI and then they're backed up. So when they get to it and then they review it, if they have questions for clarification, they'll send it back to the design company for clarification or they may make recommendations. They want comments back. So then it gets back into the queue. So that's a back and forth process that stretches it out on top of the six to eight months that it takes to do a, a design on these projects. Uh, we're not the only ones asking uh, for design and that they have lots of business. I, I mean, that's what really what's slowing it down. And they're having the same situation that we have. They, they can't find help either. So they can't even find enough engineers to speed up the process. Well, I guess the process I'm trying to try to figure out is how we, and I think I, think I said this to you the last time as well, how do we go about getting these particular roofing projects under contract so we don't have this slippage, I'll call, $125,000 worth of slippage? Is there any way that we can, I don't know if, I, I don't know if we can even do this statutorily, but I, I was, is, is there any way that we can sort of streamline this process? So in the sense what I'm asking is, is before you would even come here to ask us for a particular dollar amount for a roof, you've already spoke to a roofer and have it under contract, and all you got to do is sign it. And is, is, is that where we are in this process? Well, or, and, and I think the eastern high, you're in the, just the design phase. Mm -hmm. So that would probably be no for that one. Well, I, I, I've tried to change our approach <laughs> uh, to, to, to prevent the slippage that you refer to uh, by asking for only funds. Uh, to put roofs into design because it takes so long and prices are changing all the time. So when they come out of design, the uh, engineering design firm can better give us a budget number to come back to you all to ask for the amount that we would need to, to get it under contract. But because we're uh, you know, part of the state, we have to put it out for bids and go through the bid process uh, and then take the lowest qualified um, bidder uh, so we couldn't go under contract before we have design and then the companies wouldn't bid on it without the design because the design dictates the, c the kind of work that has to go on. You also have to have the money in hand in order to sign a pre-audited contract. So, okay. Well, I yeah. think what he's asking is, can you not have a bid with a timeline and then we're actually moving on the bid, not on just money in the sky Is that yeah, what I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking for a live bid a bid that's live works right now and all i can do is speak with the phone so i'll take it the, you know the, the roof that you quoted me this particular i'll take it get me the paperwork that's what a kind of thing i'm looking for is so we don't have this slippage because this slippage that's occurring is unmanageable mm -hmm. yeah. extremely un unmanageable and i think that's what he's getting to is we can't keep up with the invoices or requests, I should say, not invoices, requests that come in from the school system. It's really hard to keep up because uh, that's what I want to talk to you maybe later, um, how some of the things that we've had in the hopper, so to speak, for the past couple of years, we just don't see any progress. We don't see anything finished. And I think that's the... That's the crossroads that we're at right now is I understand your organization is having a difficult time right now, um, but there's, there's limitations to what I can do. And I think that if I realize that I have, like Clint Eastwood said, every man knows his own limitations. I think that if we could probably have a better process that we didn't have to worry about losing uh, $300,000. And I get back to the design process for one reason and one reason only. is because of your timeline. Um, you, your organization has come in a couple of times about emergency for roofs. It's very difficult to take that emergency moniker seriously when we find out it's going to take six to eight months for the design process. It's going to take six to eight months to get the roof put on. And that's a month 16 months of damaging to the building and everything else. And I was just trying to figure out a way that we could knock that time frame in half. And that's what I've been looking for is what can we do to knock your time frame in half? Because it appears that time is our enemy. So, and I'm not sure there's a good answer for that. Uh, apparently, um, 
it's like you've got one hand tied behind your back as far as the design process, as far as the state, as you just explained. So that's where I am. I'm trying to figure out, and if anyone wants any ideas, I'm more than willing to listen. But what Mr. Paisley was saying, uh, Mr. Hook, is it's true. The taxpayers can't keep up with the, with the requests that come, they're coming in. It's just impossible to keep up. No, it's possible. It's very possible to do. Just jack up in, just jack your tax rate up back to sixty-five cents, and you have plenty of money. But I digress. Uh, I, d I do want to uh, just respond that we are, you know, tied to the design process, uh, and it is it is quite lengthy. Uh, and then the other piece, um, we're tied to the uh, sealed bid process too. So I can't I can't ask for quotes and and engage in um, <coughs> negotiations outside of the sealed bid process. Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of questions. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, we, oh, yes, sir. I'm finished, yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On, the, on the, the maintenance issue, you've gone from, the last time we talked about this, I, you had said you were down from 71 maintenance employees to 25? More or less at that time, yes, sir. And they really probably can't get to all the projects, can they? It's, on it's, a timely basis? It, it's difficult sometimes to, to keep up, but then there are other times when we're when we're caught up. Uh, the one thing that that we've discussed um, in here and in our board meetings is we we don't have the the staffing and the funds to do preventive maintenance, so we're in just in responsive mode. Um, um, so that's you know when we speak about um, whether it's HVAC or roof leaks or um, a toilet leak. We're, wait, we, we're, we're waiting to respond. We're not able to get ahead of those right. things. Is there a reason why ADSS hasn't considered engaging a third-party vendor to do regular maintenance on HVAC, roofing, um, lighting? I mean, as I may have said in one of our joint meetings, we had vendors that came in, and on a regular basis, they'd come in and change ballast in the lights, change all the light bulbs out in the banks. Uh, they would come in and change on a regular cycle. They'd come in and change all the filters, and they probably would have kept you in a lot out of a lot of trouble on those HVAC filters. And some of the stuff I've seen in those pictures from Mr. Bass of the trash that was in some of those heating units is a miracle we didn't have a fire out of some of that. Um, somebody to do this on a regular basis. They set it on a schedule. They come in and they do it. I'm not saying it's going to be cheaper. I don't know, but it would give you a number you could budget on a contract and say these folks are going to come in and do this. They'll come in and look at it and tell you what they'll charge you to do it. At least keep you current on the maintenance and servicing so that we have make it easier probably for y'all to bring us an estimate of what you need to get done in the upcoming year. If they look, if they're maintenance, uh, doing the maintenance on your HVAC systems, they can look at it and say, Okay, this one's probably going to need to get replaced, or this piece of maintenance or repair is going to need to get done within the next 12 months. You put that in your budget. You put that in the budget and bring it to us. We've got a number from a facility that, or an operation that can get the work done, or you get it from a, another vendor that can actually do the work. But get it on a regular basis so we're not trying to deal with this month by month by month by month. It's just, it's really difficult as, as, um, Mr. Lashley and Mr. Paisley have said for us to constantly be trying to find a source of funds and having to go in and use money you had designated for something else. That's a whole other issue right there. Somebody should have told us when we, when the motion was made to move money out of your PAYGO fund to pay for mold remediation, nobody said that money had already been obligated. So when that money was moved, now you've got a need to take care of, of work that you had obligated and the money's been spent on mold. I'm not saying we would have found it someplace else, but we probably wouldn't have pulled it out of there if we'd known that money was already obligated. So, I mean, it's just, it's frustrating. It's really frustrating. I agree. And I, I think it is a great idea to, uh, uh, to look at some service contracts for preventive maintenance on our uh, boilers and chillers, which are big ticket, sure. big ticket items, uh, as as well as roofs, uh, we're unable to do preventive maintenance on our our roofs. And there are things that we can do right. that are parts of the warranty 
we should be documenting that we're doing preventive maintenance yearly on the roofs right so that we're able to maintain our warranty if something happens so um, I think that's um, uh, those things are very important uh, I've discussed service contracts around our boilers and chillers uh, with some companies and I'm glad to bring pricing to the Board of Commissioners uh, at this time we we don't have funds to do that we do um, do some service contracts with some companies that we use when we have uh, large repairs on a boiler or a chiller that we our staff cannot handle. Right. So we do that, and, and we do have a, a pretty fast burn rate uh, with uh, our, our maintenance budget when it comes to calling those those folks in. But I think that would would improve um, our, our ability to maintain and get, a, get ahead of some things. And I think the same is true of uh, the, the roofing CIP. I know when I was up here last time, I applauded you for making that motion and agreeing to do the roof study, the roof capital improvement plan. I think if we can get ahead of roofs, then the, the design time won't hurt us as much as it is now. The problem is we're behind and the water's coming in. Um, honestly, if we get the, the Graham Middle roof, which was from the top 10 list, but then the Eastern roof, uh, and then we have one other partial roof, I think we'll be in really good shape to really use the, the roofing CIP to guide us in getting things into design, but I think we'll have a, a lull in what we need to do with roofs. How many maintenance these. people do you have currently employed? Uh, I think that we have. Was, uh, that was my next question, Mr. Chairman. I think we have 30, <laughs> 34 at this point. How many? 34. All right. We gave them <clears throat> July, excuse me, June the 19th in our annual budget to you guys. We gave you the money for your requested maintenance people. What, where's the rest of the money? Where's it gone? Has it been spent? Are you holding it? What are you holding it for? Is it lap salaries? No, we're, we're not no, holding We don't get money back. No. The state does, but by statute, the county, once we give it to you with that annual budget, it's theirs. And they move it around, they massage it, they do all kinds of things with it, but they're not spending it on maintenance people as you just correctly testified. <clears throat> No, sir. We're not. We're not holding the money. Where we're not, is the money? We're not talking about the PAYGO funds. We're talking about our local um, budget, the money that's given to the school system to budget. So we use that for day-to-day -day operations. Whether we're talking about uh, paper towels for the student and staff restrooms, or we're talking about nuts and bolts for the for the maintenance staff, or repair parts, and we uh, we do spend that money daily. Um, and uh, I mean, our books are open to the, the county commissioners. I mean, that's part of statutes that you can review our books. But I assure you that all the money that's budgeted for maintenance is spent on maintenance items. May I finish my question? Please. The reason I was going to ask that next question was if you're down so from 71 now to what, 34? So you've added a few from the 25. Mm -hmm. Would it not be, if you look at the cost of trying to build back up to a team of 71, if that's your goal, it might be once again cheaper once you add in all the the operating cost or the personnel cost and the benefits cost and into the process. It might be cheaper to use a third party vendor or something like that, or at least part of it. Especially when you then look at also the regular maintenance work that you have to do and farm out to another agency. You got the money. <coughs> Where's the money currently? It was in your budget. We paid it to ABSS. I'm going to defer to, to Mr. Rogers to speak to you about our budget. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. It's good to see you this evening. My name is Lowell Rogers. I'm the deputy superintendent for Alamance Burlington Schools. Dr. Butler does send his regrets. He had a family matter uh, that he needed to attend to this evening, so he apologizes for not being here. Your question about the budget, um, there were some requests. There were raises from the state that we tried to honor for all of our employees. So that would eat into it. I don't know of a fund or that was funds that were provided specifically for to meet the 75 um, number that was previously in place. But I can assure you we're not holding back. Um, we're trying to maximize, especially with our buildings and the capital, understanding that the county is responsible for our capital um, projects, that we're trying to honor that. Well, Mr. Hook's indicating that he's willing to look at outside sources. Yes, sir. You've got the money. 
is 75 to 34, whatever. That's a lot of salary sitting out there. Yes, sir. Uh, now, if the state increased salaries, that's not coming from us. That's coming from the state. So we're mixing oranges and apples now. We're trying to confuse the equation for some reason. Yeah. But if the state increased salaries on state-paid funding, that didn't come from us in the first place. My question is, why has that... 75-34, that's easy math. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of dollars. Why have you not had an HVAC person change filters and outsource uh, or a roofing? Yeah, you've got the money. Where is it? We don't have the money, but we we have... Where did so the money the 75 go? Let me ask the question differently. Well, I don't know, because it went from 75 people to, to now 34, not over a span of a year, but over a long period of time, from my understanding. And so it's not like that happened. And I don't want that impression, and I apologize if there's any mis miscommunication on my end, but that, that was not, you know, that's not been doing from, from us on trying to drop that over the last year. We understand the importance of our maintenance staff, being able to serve our buildings, ensure it's a safe, productive environment for our staff and students and also being respectful of our tax your taxpayers, our taxpayers, uh, funding that you all provide to us. So we try to make sure we're good stewards. And that's where we're trying to get in a, a, a place where we're, our, our roofs are in good spots and our, our students and staff can work in an environment that's clean. So, and then also back in October, I understand, back in October, uh, we did present part of that proposal. I believe the board had asked for us to, to show some recommendations as far as we're moving forward, where we did present um, some possible you know, um, uh, third-party contracts to come in and do servicing, like on our HVAC, on our roof, and those types of things. So that is ultimately our goal in looking at that funding, but it's, a, it's quite the financial commitment right now, and, and we're not able to enter that with the current funding that we have. Yes. A couple of comments. Um, one on our current line of thought, and then get, and then one getting back to specifically item seven B. Um, Mr. Hooks was talking about uh, preventative maintenance. Yeah, we, particularly Mr. Lashley, has been talking about preventive maintenance and the maintenance plan since he's been on the board, and that's been a source of frustration. I think for us is that we've never really gotten a clear articulation of what the school system's maintenance plan is, and that goes back for four superintendents. Yes, sir. Um, it does, there doesn't seem to be one, and, and I think we're getting that tonight, is that there's not a systematic preventative maintenance plan that is in operation. There can be many reasons for that, but regardless of the reasons, we've got to get that. We've got to work together to get a maintenance plan and to ensure, whether it's contracted, whether it's in-house, that we're doing preventative maintenance in the schools. Yes, sir. I think Mr. Chairman's question and Mr. Carter's question gets to the idea, uh, is there a lapsed salary in your budget for 40 people that you've budgeted for that you haven't hired? Mm -hmm. And if that, then that is a source of funds that can be used to fund this maintenance plan. Understood. If not, then that's different, and that's what we need to understand. Yes, sir. So that's my comment on that. We simply have to have a preventative maintenance plan. Um, back to 7B, I submit, Mr. Chairman, that on – just on 7B, that I don't think a, I don't think we need any infor more information to make a decision on 7B. Um, so I don't see that tabling that particular item does us any good. My thoughts on this are as follows: um, w In addition to a maintenance plan, we've been talking about roofs since I've been on the board. Um, we've been frustrated at the pace that it's taken to get roofs. Uh, to get roofs through the process. We finally are moving roofs through the process. One of those is on the top 10 list. It's designed, it's ready to go, it needs more money. We don't like that, but it, I mean, that's where we are. Uh, the second one is Eastern High School, which though it's not on the top 10 is a high priority. Both of those roofs have been identified by the, the firm that we, that the county has hired to do these evaluations. Those are priorities, so regardless of when we get the full report, we know these are going to be at the top of it. There's money in ABS's system, ABSS's system, to take care of these of these roofs. I'd rather fund the roofs now so that hopefully these things are fixed by next summer so we don't have mold problems in Eastern and Grand Middle. So I would move that on item 7B that we allocate $216,977.94 of interest earned on the Series 2021 bond proceeds 
and transfer $85,783.06 from school capital reserves to fund the Graham Middle School Roofing Project and the Eastern High School Roofing Design Project. I'll second that. Mr. Manager, yes, sir. what is your recommendation or option one? <clears throat> I would recommend approval based on the motion made by Commissioner Turner. All right. Any other discussion? I'm good for this vote, but I would like to speak. You guys have, and I just want to say something for a minute, but it has nothing pertaining to this. So I'm ready to vote. All right. And so am I. All in favor of Mr. Turner's motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. All right. You want to continue with C or Mr. Hooks? I'm going to step to aside, but I will back him up. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Controlling this, Mr. Okay. <laughs> I, saw, I saw something moving, what, and I'm just using the arrow buttons here. All right, I, I, I'm going to walk through this uh, presentation. Uh, this is the presentation that's part of 7C. This was uh, a mold remediation update that was uh, not given in our last uh, uh, Board of Education meeting, but the, the one before that. <clears throat> so, um, um, I'll try not to read all all of it, but just to to bounce through uh, uh, the different different points. This just gives the uh, kind of the background, the timeline uh, of of uh, how we got to to where we are now. Um, so we had uh, uh, two uh, special called uh, Board of Education meetings to address mold that was found in two elementary schools at the time. We thought that was. Uh, the limits of, of what we were going to find. That was at Andrews and Newland. Uh, and in those meetings, we used uh, PAYGO funds uh, to, to address those two projects. Um, and then um, we uh, had more mold concerns. Uh, so we actually delayed uh, the start of school. And we had three different joint, joint sessions between the Board of Education and the Board of Commissioners. Um, so this was back in on the 23rd of October, and this kind of gave a picture of, of where we were with a, a breakdown of um, the amount of money that had gone towards each of these areas. I have some more accurate numbers at the back of this presentation. So uh, this uh, slide illustrates uh, money that was redirected uh, through those joint meetings to address funding. Funding, So uh, both boards were in, in meetings, two of them over at uh, ABSS central office and one of them here. And as uh, presentations uh, occurred, both uh, boards uh, um, discussed the, the mold and, and how to quickly get us back into school. And so uh, $20 million was it reallocated um, from capital reserves to, to address mold. So I want to just review quickly the, the current PAYGO funding situation. Uh, Mr. Carter already alluded to uh, when the, the board uh, made a motion, uh, the Board of Commissioners, to uh, redirect the, the PAYGO funds uh, in early or maybe in the first day or so of, of September, uh, we had already spent and entered into contracts for uh, different uh, types of uh, uh, repairs and capital improvements uh, for the school system using the PAYGO money. So um, this, uh, this slide just tells the uh, amount of the expenditures that had already been spent as of August 31st. Um, so we had spent on planned and unplanned uh, work uh, involving uh, capital improvements and capital repairs, 1.247 million, uh, and then the unplanned mold remediation spending addressing uh, Andrews and Newland was 1.267. So at that time, we would have had $784,000 uh, left in, in PAYGO to make it for the rest of the year. Can I interrupt you? Yes, ma'am. Just for the public's information, can you please define what this PAYGO account is? Well, that sounds, we hear it, but that might not be understood when we're 
broadcast, and then the, I just the, want to the PAYGO that. account is the three point three million dollars in capital uh, that the Board of Commissioners uh, approves to give to the school system through the um, the uh, the budget cycle in order to for us to carry out capital improvements and capital repairs to maintain the schools. And being a former board member, before that $3.2 million was designated, Brian Haygood worked really hard on it. Sometimes we would get anywhere from $250,000, $500,000 to zero. I think the highest we ever got was a million. So it was never as good as it has been with three point two, which really made a massive difference. So this slide just indicates um, um, how the PAYGO money was reallocated uh, in the, uh, the joint sessions that we had. Um, a motion was made to move uh, the complete 3.3, uh, but we had already, uh, had already uh, spent uh, uh, a, pr a portion of that money. Uh, so the bottom line here is uh, the, the motion, uh, like Mr. Carter mentioned earlier, uh, it didn't recognize that we had already entered into spending or contracts for uh, $1.27 million of, of the funds. And I can show you how, wait, wait, how we had done that. You all knew that, though, right? Yes, sir. I just can't figure out why nobody said anything about it. Yeah. If I can, um, I, I'll take responsibility for that. That was at the Friday joint meeting that right. we had. Um, I was, I, I'll be honest, I wasn't prepared when I started hearing the funding sources. Um, and then after, after this board voted, um, the staff did uh, alert me to, to the PAYGO. I chose to, we will, you all, I really, and Dr. Butler wanted to be able to provide final numbers before we came back to the board again. And so I take responsibility for that, and I apologize okay. um, for not speaking up after the board voted um, at, during that meeting. So I apologize for that. that I own that one. Thank you for being human. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Um, so I just wanted to illustrate how we had spent the $1.247 million. Um, so when I first came, uh, my department was essentially out of money. I started March 1st, so we had things piling up, waiting on July 1st for the funding uh, to, to appear so we could get started. Uh, so this page illustrates things that were approved <coughs> Through board education meetings, we already began to approve contracts in advance of July 1st so we could get the work moving on July uh, 1st. We didn't expect the mold, um, so uh, these are the things we did. Uh, we put the uh, kitty mulch. We have to have the kitty mulch at all the middle, uh, elementary playgrounds uh, 12 inches deep, and then and the state will come out and, and expect that, inspect that, so we have to make sure we meet, uh, meet that standard. Um, we had... Uh, done a contract to replace the uh, BEJ sewer line. I had, that actually was on uh, one of my top um, lists that we needed capital money for, but we went ahead and pulled it in here because I thought we could, since we got a, 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 a good price on that, go ahead and get it done. And this was all part of the, uh, the five-year PAYGO plan that I had presented here um, several months ago. Uh, so we went ahead and entered into contracts around key cards and camera systems at middle school um, when I first came, there was lots of discussion about uh, money that the uh, Board of Commissioners had given for middle school cameras. It was $500,000. Uh, so we got that. It wasn't in design yet. We got that in design. I gave a presentation here uh, not long after I started about what that design looked like. So when we got it out of design and we put it out to bid, um, the $500,000 wouldn't cover the cameras and the key cards. So we used the Board of Commissioners $500,000 to do the cameras only at Western Middle and Woodlawn Middle. And so out of PAYGO, we picked up the key card system at Western Middle and uh, Woodlawn Middle to put with the camera systems. And then also to do cameras and key cards at Hallfields uh, Middle, Southern Middle, and Garrett Elementary. Uh, we felt like it was best to go ahead and do Garrett Elementary because Garrett and Hallfields are under one roof. And if you have a camera system on one side and you're not able to monitor the complete complex, we didn't think that would be, be right. So these are, these are the figures for, for the contracts that we entered into uh, for all that work. And um, by the time that uh, we had the joint meetings, there was, there, were, there was already wiring in the schools, there were cameras in the schools, uh, doors were being wired up. So we were uh, too far along with those projects to, to stop those things. 
other things that we had uh, committed uh, PAYGO money for, uh, we have lots of doors around the school system uh, that were put on when the schools were built, and some of them are literally 50 years old, and uh, you, you can no longer repair them or they're, or they're rusted uh, uh, really beyond use. So I have lots of doors here that we had um, uh, entered into contracts for and ordered and purchased, um, and I had that marked on my five-year PAYGO plan that we were going to spend X amount of dollars on door replacements because we could see, see that coming. So these doors are all, all up now. Um, so we replaced a gas furnace, a small gas furnace in part of uh, Walter Williams High School, fixed a pothole at Ray Street, and then we had the, uh, uh, the light pole at Southern High School field that had the giant woodpecker hole in it that we talked about in this meeting. These are other things that we spent that uh, $1.247 million on. Uh, we, uh, worked with, we're still finishing up a wall project at Woodlawn where we took one large room and divided it into two separate rooms. Uh, we have to refinish the gym floors every summer at the middle and high schools and elementary. Um, we had a project to reinstall the kitchen hoods and connect the fire alarms in all the cafeterias because a few years back, they were all dismantled, uh, but but now with the, the uh, food purchasing and the food grant programs that our child nutrition department can enter into, uh, you have to braise meat. Well, you can't braise meat without a hood, and and so we had to go back and start putting those putting those back up. Does that does that not come out of food services money? No, uh, the operation department has to okay. to do all the the maintaining. Okay. So uh, we repaired sinkholes uh, at Southern High School. We had two different ones, one on the field and one uh, on the sidewalk. Uh, we had to put some handicapped playground ramps in at some elementary schools. Um, we had to pay for the installation of a playground that was already ordered. Uh, the cost had already been paid. Uh, and then we had to do some exterior plaster repair at Broadview where a truck had hit the, uh, the overhang on the driveway. So all these things were standard. There's no insurance to cover any of that. Our, our deductible is so high that it wouldn't. How it about would, who hit the overhang? We Did hit they it. not have we, coverage? We hit it. Our, 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 our staff hit it. All right. So we had a truck with a, a tall. Uh, <laughs> um, if it weren't okay. for bad luck, you wouldn't have any luck at all. <laughs> uh, so we had uh, lightning hit the fire alarm system at Andrews Elementary, $31,000. Um, we had a canopy at Alexander Wilson that led from the uh, gymnasium uh, to the pre-K uh, building. Um, the canopy is all rotted. It's full of asbestos. It's literally falling down. You go out and sweep it up, and more pieces would fall down the next day. Uh, and there's so many bird nests inside of it that the students really uh, just walked to class under an umbrella to shield them from the birds. Uh, so we took that down, that part about the... The cabling, the, the fire alarm cabling and the internet cabling and all that was run in the canopy, so we had to take all that down. We weren't able to put the canopy back up, but we got it down, so uh, we took care of that. Uh, we have two fire hydrants uh, at Cummings and Broadview that are on school property. They're way far away from the street. They're at the back of the schools, uh, and they had not been flow tested in years, um, and when we flow tested them, they wouldn't flow, so we had to replace them, so that was $60,000. Uh, we had an unsafe concession stand uh, staircase at Southern High School where folks had been tripping. The stairs were not built to code. And the best way to do that now is to put up the aluminum platform that has the handicap access and railing system. So that's what that is. Uh, we have part of the sidewalk sinking at Western Alamance High School football field that makes that unsafe because you have a trip hazard. So that's what the float is there. And then we had a sewer pump that works with the Western Alamance High School um, septic fields. So we had to replace that. Uh, these are other things that we use the PAYGO money for. Uh, we are still paying to uh, finish up the move of the mobile unit that came from Southern High School over to East Lawn. It was moved well before I came, but we were still uh, sewing that up. It really takes about $50,000 once you um, look at all the costs when you move a mobile classroom. And some mobile are classrooms old. do we still have? How many do we have? Mm -hmm. uh, In operation I, that are being used. I had a presentation, uh, Mr. Carter, um, several months ago, and I, I can't remember the exact number. It's 30-something, um, but uh, we have them around the district. 
Um, and then we had lots of HVAC boards that would not work, and they were waiting on replacement July 1st, so that's what those are. So have those been replaced, are they? They have, yes. So this slide just breaks out uh, what we didn't do out of the pay-go plan that was scheduled, um, and then uh, it shows that 1.247 again. So the original undesignated funds were $231,000 uh, that we had as undesignated for the 23-24 year in case something happened. Uh, but now with the uh, <coughs> undesignated uh, and the money that we spent, uh, you can see how it all adds up to 3.3. And so the uh, intent of this presentation was to, to ask, uh, ask for some of that funding back. So this just revisits some, some of the numbers here. Um, so we had, uh, at that time, uh, remaining mold remediation invoices of uh, 5.7. Um, uh, Mr. Carter had uh, engaged with Dr. Butler at an oversight committee meeting and asked him to go back to Builder Services uh, and discuss uh, or, or negotiate some to see what, what could be done. And so uh, um, they gave us some revised pricing uh, on the... Uh, dehumidifier rental and this slide shows where they they came off some for that so that got us to uh, this number here instead of the nine um, it's 8.5 million and that's the outstanding uh, mold remediation uh, invoices and then asking for the um, the return of the 3.3 million dollars for pay go so what were the original total on the invoices before this? Is this $21,453,000? Is that an adjusted price? That, uh, that was price? the price that we had at OSC that day. That They did not adjust that price. All they did um, was adjust the humidifier. The, the humidifiers, yes, sir. Mr. Turner. Nothing, thank you. Ms. Thompson. Yeah. Um... Being on both sides of this fence, <laughs> I can tell that um, being on a board member coming here or being a commissioner, you come in here, there's not been a lot of difference in attitudes because this is high dollar. We throw out the taxpayer, but let us all remember that all of these taxpayers have children that go to public schools, charter schools, private schools, Christian schools, whatever it works for them. That's the point. And, um, and like I was talking about the pay go, over $3 million years ago, it's been a quarter of a million, you know, whatever it was given, whatever it was decided upon. Um, I hear that you're short in maintenance. We know we can, I can relate that to things with law enforcement or parks and recs or planning, we all got shortages. It seems like America is defined in shortages. We see help wanted signs everywhere. And they're just not applying, not the quality people that you need to do this, or they can make more money in the private sector. Uh, and that's about what you need to do. But we seem to always be catching up. When we did the three mold meetings, um, every, every motion but one that um, Commissioner Turner made, I seconded him. Steve just beat me to one because I wanted that mold issue solved. And wherever we had to look under every rock, every account, every bucket that Baby S has had, we took it and moved it to your checking. It wasn't ours, it was yours. We, we moved around the money, so to speak. And, um, and now you don't have that funding to go toward other things. And we supply buildings and capital and maintenance and all that. I hear about preventive maintenance. Is that going to be another whole section, uh, another whole department that will have to be funded because of hiring those people? And that's more budget that you'll have to ask for because I think prevention is the key to do anything. But in something this big, for years and years, it's been Band-Aid and ketchup. And mold hit the fan, and we all saw it. And sometimes it has to hit the fan for people to open their eyes and realize that we've got to do things a little bit different because this is so costly and it's it's hurt things because um, schools need things that they can't get right now that are important everything in every school is important and um it 
if I can say one thing, and, I, and I'm just going to say this, I watch, I watch my Congress blame each other, I've watched my state government blame each other, and I've watched my county government blame each other. And that doesn't get us anywhere, but continue to blame each other. My state budget was three months late because of casinos. Uh, my federal budget's late because they can't decide who they want Speaker of the House and who's going to do what. And, it's, um, and then one day, last week, a senator was going to whoop the hind end of a teamster. I thought, what <laughs> is happening to us? You know, we, what, it's like the housewives of just name it. And it's, it's painstaking to hear that condemnation because um, I personally think we're all part of this because I've been on both sides and mold's been around forever and it's just caught up with us. And if we're going to fix mold, we've got to fix roofs. And if we want to say that we are part of buildings and maintenance, then we got to be part of that. I don't know how we're going to figure this out, but we can't spend $20 million on mold and not take care of our roofs unless we got some kind of fairy godmother that's just going to drop us these millions all the time. And um, it's, it's easy to beat people up when they're low. It really is, because I've been on both sides. And I just want us to stop that, because all that matters in this is the kids that go to these schools. Unless we're going to close all of our schools and divide them up to go to our charter schools and let them borrow our buses, then we need to get on the ball here and do something right by our public schools, because I think all schools are great depending on what serves the kid that walks in the door. And parents show up. So it, it's... Um, it, it's frustrating. It's just really easy to fuss about it. But what's really hard is to do something about it. And we had a sermon at church yesterday about are you going to do or are you going to be? And we're doing all the time, but we've got to start being it. If we're going to be leaders in this county and take care of our children, which I don't know if y'all remembered how high our juvenile crime rates are, how high our overdose rates are, how how everything is, it's not positive. It is getting on our kids, and we've got to make sure they have everything they need. And if that's a roof, then we got to find a way to do it. And, uh, but I think no matter what, your seven and this five have got to work together. That's all that matters because last I checked, we all run to be leaders in this county, which means making a future for our children. That's all that matters because right now they have so many targets on their backs, it's not even funny. And I want these next generations to be ready to lead because we don't own these seats. Nobody owns these seats. You're lucky if you win, and it's based on what you do. And so um, that's just my opinion. There's five smart people up here that come from all different aspects, and surely we can figure out how to make this work because we don't have any choices because now is the time to man up and make this work. Uh, we can't keep talking about it. We've got to start doing something about it. And however we figure that out is what we're going to have to do. That's why we're here, is to figure this out. And um, welcome to being new and catching everything, because that's the way it always is. And everybody that's new catches from before. You know, I hear every president blame the last president for whatever they did. No, you're in the seat right now. I'm in the seat right now. It is on me. No more yesterday. Yesterday's gone. And so I hope that we five can put our heads together with you seven if we have to go one more round and meet together and act really good to each other and work together to think about every set of feet that walk in these schools. I don't want them sitting in a classroom water pouring out. That, that's unacceptable because none of us are sitting here with water pouring out. I don't know why we think that's okay and we can fight over it. It has to be solved. So, it's just Thank you, ma'am. Done. Mr. Turner. No, thank you. All right, Mr. Carter. Well, I think we do need to find a solution. I don't know what the answer is by any stretch of the imagination right now. We are asking our administration to take a look at this and try to come back to us with some ideas on how to solve this problem. Um, I'd like to recommend that we table 7C for a, fi for a final discussion and vote at our first meeting in December. Is that a motion? Yes. Mr. Lashley. Oh, thank you, Chairman. Um, 
one thing is for certain that you don't know how you're going to get someplace if you don't know where you came from. We have a thing in my business which we call it, ter we call it technical forensic accounting. And what that means is, is if you bring the firm an idea and you lay out how this idea is going to come to fruition for, for your clients, and the reason I'm saying this is because your clients are 22,000 students. <clears throat> when something occurs and doesn't go right, doesn't uh, go as you planned it to go, you have to sit down and look back at where you made an error or where the mistake was made who led you down this path that didn't work out too well for you. And we have a situation like that here. And I'm just going to pose this question to my fellow commissioners and everyone in this room. If you're going to do some technical forensic accounting here, you have to look back at what got you into this situation. What decision did you make that was wrong or short-sighted that got you in this particular situation? Ms. Thompson said tonight that, you know, this is very expensive and money doesn't fall out of the sky. But in this particular situation, it did. Money did fall out of the sky. Let's go back two years ago, and let's go back and revisit the decisions that were made for the money, for the HVAC problems that the school system knew that they had. Let's go back and revisit that solution. Instead, now let's just go that the federal government gave the school system almost $100 million to fix these problems. That's where the money fell out of the sky from. So as we're looking at how we find ourselves in this situation, we have to look at the decisions that were made back then. And I just want to pose a question. What if the decision was made not to give money away $10 million at one point to the staff. And it was said in the local newspaper that this money was given not so much for the students or the buildings, but were for morale. When we look at that decision and say, hey, if we'd have, if we'd have gave the $10 million to our HVAC problem, and then 16 months later allocate another $9 million to your HVAC problem, my question is this. Does anyone believe that we would have had a $21.6 million mold problem if that decision had been made differently? Now, the reason why that has to be brought up is the bottom line, $9 million. That $9 million has got to come from somebody. Where do we get it from, commissioners? Do we take it out of our savings account? Do we take it out of the other department's budget? Because this isn't Disney World. There's no magic wand that can be waved to correct the mistakes that were made that created this hole. Mistakes from making short-sighted decisions, to allocate, it, that's efficient in, it, it, in its allocation of scarce resources. My point is this. When you create a hole that large, it can't be taken care of overnight. It's a process that takes place, and that process is going to have to take place over the next six months. Because at some point in time, the taxpayers need to be told how much this is going to cost them. At a $9 billion price tag, that's either that come out of our fund balance, I mean, you tell me where, where it's, we, we, we don't have a lot of choices here, and it's not by our decision-making that happened to, to us. Other folks' decision-making caused this problem. All I'm trying to say is, is this problem did not occur in a day, a month, or a year, and this problem can't be fixed in a day or a month or a year. As a matter of fact, Alamance County taxpayers should take notice. Here it is coming up on Christmas time. In about four months, you're going to see 
the price tag that you, the taxpayers of Alamance County, are going to have to swallow for this short-sighted decision. And that's all I'm saying. I think we probably should table it. There's a lot of facts and figures that we need to go through. But all I'm trying to say is, is like, we, I'll go back and revert what I said before. It's very difficult to manage these, pro, these, these problems that are presented to us without having an effect on our Sheriff's Department, our Parks and Recs Department, our Board of Health. These things impact other departments. And that means that other departments are going to have to sacrifice because of an ill-guided decision. And that's all I wanted to say tonight because I do believe we need to table this. There's a lot of information that I would like to sit down with you and your staff to try to figure out uh, how we can do this because I'm sure that your PAYGO funds are probably something that we probably should revisit because... That's something that if we are in the preventative maintenance idea, that's probably something that we probably should do. And security. Well, security should have been done a long time ago, Mr. Carr. Right. Exactly. I mean, we took 500. Y'all didn't ask us for it. We took 500 because me and Mr. Turner and the rest of the commissioners realized that safety was the biggest important issue that we have as elected officials. So we took $500,000 out and wanted this problem to take be taken care of. And what I'm saying is it seems like every single time we try to help take care of our problems, we just end up digging a bigger hole for ourselves because of the contracts or, uh, you know, the bidding process, whatever the case may be. And I'm sure you, you feel that as well. So uh, I would just say I, I would agree to uh, table it. Um, I think there's some more information that I certainly would like to get from you and your staff and Mr. Rogers before I, uh, because I would like to uh, negotiate. Because I can't afford to give you $9 million. And the reason I can't do it, sir, is because, <laughs> you got to turn that down, sir. Sorry about that. Are you Sorry. winning that game, Henry? <laughs> Sorry about that, Mr. Um, I lost my train of thought. I'll, s I'll send you the bill. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, but, point of order, there's a motion on the table that has not been seconded. Yeah, I, I'm, I think well, so I'm, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, I'm finished. Thank you for your time. Questions I have are as follows. You're new on this job. What was your first day in this new position? My first day on this position? Mm -hmm. March the 1st. I wouldn't say I'm new. I think I had well, six months to be new. I'm trying to help you here. <laughs> Uh, and you had a predecessor that made a lot of the res was responsible for maintenance and whether filters got replaced or whether uh, roofs leaking were a priority or not. Is that correct? That falls in the operations department. I, I do want you to know we, repl we replace filters. I won't deny we might miss one here and there, but... We we have a re filter replacement uh, schedule. I know it's been brought up in this in this uh, room at multiple meetings, but we do replace filters. We well, we Mr. get them Man in by the truck. Said that filters have not been ever replaced in various units. I think he told a falsehood. All right. Um, as Mr. Lashley just indicated, he he was off a couple of dollars. He said nineteen million dollars went to bonuses, it's actually eighteen million six seven hundred thousand whatever. It's just right at nineteen million. So he rounded off he was dead on the money. And Dr. Butler said to the Alamance News and is quoted in last week's edition that those monies really didn't make any difference in retention of employees. So I guess what he was saying was that you guys spent $19 million that have been, have been de designated for HVAC and roof system, and it, quote, really didn't make any difference in retention. Mm -hmm. That's an incredible statement. And your statement that we really, quote, 
did not expect the mold. That was your exact statement. How can you tell me that? They Every year, you've had mold in these classrooms. Teachers, his wife, my wife, every single year that they taught, carried in Clorox and tubs and, and clean mold every year. You didn't expect the mold. Uh, who decided to shut down the HVAC systems during the highest temperature months, highest humidity, who made that decision? I think we've reported to you all that uh, that has been done for 16 years as part of an energy saving initiative that started about 16 years ago. I, I don't know who started And as that. Mr. Carter stated, this mold remediation, the severity of it didn't happen this summer. It happened summer after summer. Who's responsible for that? Yeah, we've got to tell the taxpayers, and we're not talking about a few pennies on the hundred. We're talking about a lot of tax dollars to correct the, the mistake that the school system, and I'm not going to say school board, I'm not going to say uh, administration, but a combination of that, $19 million, and it made no difference in retention. I just find that terribly irresponsible. Yes, sir, please respond. Mr. Chairman, um, thank you. I, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I, I don't recall the, the, the article that you're, you're quoting, and I apologize for, for not having that on, on hand. Um, I, I feel like we're, you know, during that time, being somebody that was not with ABSS at the time, but was in HR position in this region at that time, where many districts were looking at bonus opportunities to retain staff during that um, time of coming out of COVID, <laughs> I was thinking at that time, to, to keep highly qualified staff in front of our students and working with our students, driving our students back and forth, encouraging them to stay with our district as we were trying to come out of it. I, I would believe, strongly believe, that that's what we were looking at, similar to what many county governments offered with some funding that, that was received uh, across North Carolina and, and, and uh, providing bonuses for staff as well in the county. I think it's a similar type practice in trying to use some of that funding, not all, uh, some much of it was used for learning loss and, and working with our students in the summertime, giving them opportunities to, again, uh, due to that long period where we were remote learning, um, and we all know that that face-to-face -face learning um, is more of a positive impact on our students to give them that extended year with those learning opportunities. So there's different ways that that funding is being used, as well as capital, to, to work. But that $19 million did not go to uh, retention, learning loss. It didn't go. To, it went to bonuses. And your superintendent said it really didn't make a difference. I don't recall him saying that. Well, he, um, he wasn't here at that time. Um, it, it was not said in one of our meetings. I'm quoting from one of the articles okay. in the Alamance News. Okay. I'd, I'd have to see that. I'd, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with that quote, but I know he wasn't here in his position at that time. Um, to be able to speak on that. I know that, again, many districts across the state, just like I said, with county governments, uh, did a practice in using some funding that they had to... Well, let uh, me redirect this. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, you've got maintenance that was not done. Yes, sir. These HVAC systems were not looked at during the summer. They didn't go into the buildings and determine that was a building of mold during the summer. Who lost their job? Who's responsible for this error? That's cost us already $27 million, and now you're asking for another $8.7 million, whatever it is. Who lost their job? Who lost their job? Well, yes. there's been quite a bit of turnover in, in our district um, over the last year, two years, um, as I think I'm representative of that mm -hmm. and, and somebody coming in in a new position and we have new leadership and, and um, our board is very supportive of us and being you know, up front when we see an issue to be able to uh, tackle it and be able to make sure the appropriate stakeholders are aware of it. So um, I, if you want me to point to one individual, I don't believe I can uh, point to one individual. I know the, the HVAC being turned off, which was actually the, the settings were changed to be at a higher setting. Um, during the summertime, um, my understanding, uh, just as Mr. Hook said, was in an effort for energy conservation. 
I think we're seeing now where, you know, you try to do in one area, you're paying for it in the other. And that's city-wise and pound forward. Right. But well, how have you reorganized maintenance and Mr. Hook's job mm -hmm. to prevent this from happening in the future? I think a lot of what we presented this evening shows that in, in trying to, um, I think Ms. Thompson mentioned the the, um, the roofs and the need to get those roofs addressed, which I've heard from several of you tonight um, has been a drive for the last several years, I think Mr. Turner said, um, and with our school buildings. And so it's it's almost, and somebody likened it to a hole and feeling like we're, we're, yeah. we're trying to get out of that hole. We are. We're having the conversations about preventative maintenance and what we need to do to be able to put something like that in place. So those, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at a, a leadership team at the school system with our support of our board um, and looking at those practices to, again, we, we're trying to be good stewards of the money. And, um, but... It's we're, we're, we have several projects that that are have need. You know, the Eastern High School um, project that uh, Mr. Hook presented on this evening wasn't on the top ten. He said that, um, but through this process, we've we've noted that there are huge leaks, and so that's why we needed to come this evening to ask for for help with that. Um, I would love to be able to come back and be able to present on uh, some of the great things our students are doing, but unfortunately, we're coming right now um, at expressing our needs that we have across our district. Um, did we give bonuses, the county? Did we have art money and all kind of stuff like that? We were able to help people. There was, do you want to explain it, Sherry? I don't want to misstate, but. It has been a while. So there were bonuses that were given to public safety right. area. Right. So I think health department and then um, public safety, which was like a hazard, hazardous pay, yeah. I yeah. think we can So that was kind as. of the consensus, just what we're seeing. I mean, I'm not making excuses for anything, but I don't want to stack like we didn't do it too. And I think we have beat up the school system enough. You can't say it enough what they did wrong. We did wrong things too, what we did wrong. But it is not going to solve your problem of your roofs and other situations that we have here by continuing to beat this horse. If, we, if this was flipped. It's not. It's not, and, it, and it, that's okay. Huh. But I'm just saying, how many times do you have to tell somebody what they've done wrong? I think they know. I think we all know. <clears throat> and I just think we either need to, I don't know what we need to do, but this is getting ridiculous to where we just keep talking about the same thing over and over. It's fixated. And if, unless you're going to close your schools and find somewhere else for them to go, we're going to have to do something about this. Mr. Chairman, I call a previous question. I'm going to join the motion to move this down to our December meeting. But we've asked the school board over and over and over for financial information such as which projects from the bond funding of 2018 have been completed, what's, that sort of thing. Have you seen that yet? You were the one that made the motion. Again, Mr. Chairman, I call previous question. I mean, that, that's the motion to stop <laughs> the debate. The point is, we need vote on financial that. information. Okay, all in favor of the vote signify that it is to delay this vote uh, to our first meeting in December. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. We're moving the county attorney's report. County manager. Nothing to report. I'm sorry. Nothing to report tonight. All Thank right. you. Uh, Commissioner, comments. Do you want to retain those or do you want to have them now? I'm good. I think I, I am as well. Any, any other commissioner comments? Huh? We're going to go then to um, county attorney. It, yes, and we've already made the closed session motion for the record, so um, if the board would want to vote on that proposal at this point, move to closed session, that would be appropriate. All right. Do we have such a motion? So moved. Second. Have a motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. We're now in closed session. In session, uh, we've 
Previously closed the closed session. There's no action to be taken. No action. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgov.com. TVNC.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.